Beyond. 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 Welcome everybody to Beyond number 492. I'm Max Scoville. I'm joined today by Brian Altano. Beyond. Andrew Goldfarb. Hello. And Alana Pierce. Great. We have a great show lined up today. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. There's Knack 2. There's Prey. Just Prey, not Prey 2. But it's the second Prey. Isn't that confusing? And then, of <laughs> course, there's the fact that uh, Ben Heck got the Nintendo PlayStation working. That was that weird hybrid that led to the original PlayStation 1. And then Code Veronica X is coming to PS4 this week. Plus, we got a bunch of questions from you guys. Uh, friendly reminder, there's lots of different ways you can watch Beyond. You can check out our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash IGN Beyond. Uh, and then, of course, there are the various uh, PS4, Xbox One, Roku, Apple TV, and uh, participating Smart Fridge apps that have, you know... IGN support. So, uh, you know, if you're watching on one of those, be sure to subscribe or leave nice reviews or comments or whatever, or really, just thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Anyway, let's get down to business. To brass knacks, if you will. No, oh, that was good. No, I was good. Nailed it. I think we're done here today. Yeah, thanks yeah for it's almost like we had to do this intro a whole bunch of times because people <laughs> kept screwing up. Anyway, Alana, how's uh, how's knack two? Please so talk I about knack two. So I went down to uh, PlayStation headquarters for the first time ever. First things first, really nice campus. Whenever I go to like EA or PlayStation down in uh, Redwood, I'm like, dear God, it must be nice to work there. Yeah. So much, they have like courtyards and billing. stuff. That's why yeah. Jared Petty left us to go work at EA. They campus. have like several restaurants and gyms. Like That's it's why he went. He crazy. loves several restaurants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think he started going to the gym as well, actually. Classic yeah, Jared behind Petty. all those restaurants. <laughs> yes. But uh, Knack was there. I actually played Knack 2 with Mark Cerny. And apparently the last thing that I said about Knack on this show was that I thought it looked like a good game, but I didn't want to play it. And I know that because he reminded me that I had said that as soon no. as I walked in. Yeah, he's such a sweet... <laughs> Like, he's a very nice man, and his first thing was like, yeah, this is what you said about Knack last time, that you spoke about it. So I was like, really? oh. So he listens to the show, and he remembers that specific moment? I feel like someone probably told him. Mm. Stop snitching, dude. Come on, yeah. man. We're trying to do a show over here. That I was just like, well, I'm here now, so. <laughs> uh, so Knack 2, I, I think, it, I same as I said before, I think it's going to be a really good game. It seems like it plays like a Lego game, uh, but I feel like there's more variety almost. Um they, they also make a lot of really cute jokes about the things that were wrong with Knack 1, and it seems like they took a ton of notice of those things and built on top of them. Like, one of the jokes actually written into the game is, oh, you have more than three punches and a kick. So yep. it's like they made effort to actually make fun of uh, a lot of the criticisms that came with the first Knack, and... Uh, every level that I played is totally different. There was a platforming heavy level, which one thing I really like about that is if you change the difficulty, it actually changes the course that you platform. I think you played the same one, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like we had the exact same demo. Um, I thought that was really cool too. And like, you can see like the easy path or yeah. you can see like the path that you took that's like yeah. just opens more doors and stuff. Like that's really uncommon that yeah. you can actually do that kind of thing. And it's because it seems like a lot of the idea is that uh, most of the people who will play this will be like a kid and their child. Mm -hmm. It's even uh, if you're playing something that has a QTE, which one of the combat sections did it was kind of like a an arena just a, a big brawl that ends up spilling out into this gorgeous city um oh, nice and for the qtes both players have to do them but if one player fails then the other one just does it so that you don't get kind of stuck in a bottleneck mm -hmm. so how did the um the sort of platforming feel was it weighty like because the original game sort of felt like taking a rock and pulling it up and down in a big jug of water or something like that um, i don't know why i did that you know, with my arm. <laughs> i feel like I don't have a strong answer to that, which means it probably felt perfect. Like Good. I don't have an answer that's like, it felt off or it felt too light. Uh, it means you didn't really have to think about I it. I mean, no. the first game, like I, I don't think the first game was a game. It was a tech demo. And like, I mean, there were obviously like mechanics to it, but to me that was like a brawler or like a combat game with platforming in it. Yeah. Whereas this is a platformer. Like this has like very distinct platforming sections that like, I don't know, like I agree to me, it felt good like it yeah. just didn't it didn't feel yeah. off at all it was also kind of hard yeah, was, yeah uh, i kept was, dying and like I, that was my joke is like every time i would fall off a platform or something like i could just hear mark cerny heavy sighing yeah like, i was I doing pretty terribly and then he started playing with me because you can jump in really really easily as as two player and it's just one blue knack and a red knack and uh he would just clean it like just yeah. and then he'd be like see you see if one player is falling behind uh you can warp forward to catch up to them and i would just do that all the time nice. <laughs> oh that's really awesome yeah so, so i want to ask like uh I realize this is sort of a stupid question for a game that's about a man made of blocks, but if I didn't play the first one and I don't really want to, is this like kind of just a jumping on point? I think so. Um, and I asked a lot of stuff about the narrative because I find the characters really interesting. Um, I actually like them and I- Goblins, right? Yeah, you fight some goblins. Oh uh, yeah, the one enemy of shapes is goblins. Yeah, uh, you fight other things also, that, but mostly All goblins. Right. Uh, but. I, I really want to like Knack. I want to be attached to Knack in the kind of way that you would be to, um, what's the robot's name in Big Hero 6? 
Uh, Jared Petty. Baymax? Baymax. Yeah. So I want to be attached to it in like the same way I am to a Titan in Titanfall. Um, I didn't quite get that, but the other characters are in I really like as well. And there's one level that I played that you didn't, Andrew, which is a completely stealth level. Ooh. So there's actually um, some really cool moments where you have to shrink to be smaller and then like hide underneath something. And then when uh, sort of a, a laser light that's trying to track you goes away, you move it really slowly and then hide under to like sneak through. So there's like a full stealth level. And the reason that that uh, area is set up like that is because one of the character's ex-girlfriends just really doesn't want him to visit. What? So all of the robots will exclusively attack him <laughs> and not anyone else. Cause she's just really against his presence. Wait. Huh. So this is about a woman who has a restraining order against a man and you're trying to defy that? I don't know why, but yes, kind of, potentially. I mean, I- Kids everywhere will love Knack too. <laughs> Sounds a little bit weird. Yeah. I like that, uh, I do like that you can get big and small at will. I think that's oh, yeah. such a smart change because the first game was like this weird mechanic where you're like collecting pieces and Knack gets like bigger and smaller and it just didn't work as well. Yeah, or as so you can drop all of your weight as soon as you want to. You can also uh, steal parts from your other player if you want Which to. Which is so funny. Like yeah. It's this weird like griefing thing. Yeah, but there was also uh, one level that I played that I don't know if you played or not, where I got to be, I got from like five foot to about 40 feet. Oh, wow. And this was incredibly impressive. So you enter the city through this front gate and as you go, you have to get bigger and bigger and you can fight bigger enemies. And by the end, you get thrown out of the city while you're 30 or 40 feet and then you right. come back in and re-go through the city as a giant. So it's like the same level, but from two dramatically different perspectives. So the way that you approach everything is completely different. And cool. it was a ton of fun. Like it, awesome. all of the, the stuff that you actually do in environments is mostly just hit things in the same way that you do a Lego game. Um, combat is definitely a lot more fun. And it was in Knack One. My favorite thing to do was like a body slam, which was just a kind of jump and punch. You just body slam. But if you're playing with two, pe two players, uh, you can kind of do team combos where if you do a body slam on top of the other player they turn into a bomb and have like an error of effect and uh -huh. yeah it was a lot of uh, really fun stuff in there um so you kind of implied that like visually this is a really good looking game yeah it's pretty the, the first one was um really good looking and i think a part of that was it was kind of showing off the amount of things that the PlayStation 4 could do on screen at once. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of just like, look at all these blocks. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But then I jumped over to Rezo Gun that was kind of showing me the same thing. But I have fond memories of the first Knack. I'm one of the few people that actually mostly enjoyed a lot of that game because mm -hmm. I think part of it was just that warm feeling of like, I have a new PlayStation at home. Yeah. But the other part was that it was just like a kind of fun, quirky platforming game. Um, but does this look like something that's gorgeous in 2017? I think it's really pretty. Um, it also has really nice sound design and a really nice soundtrack. So cool. in terms of like all of that presentation style, uh, I think it, it's it's delightful. Honestly, that's, that sounds great. Like I, I'm, I think there's that there's that sort of like launch title sort of honeymoon phase mm -hmm. where you're like, I got a new system and I will buy whatever's out there. And they're also kind of rushing to get games out there. And yeah. obviously they're like, what's next? Strong suit and it's visuals and mm -hmm. it didn't sound super ambitious. It was just kind of, it was really putting the PS4 through its, mm -hmm. through its motions. But in this case, it's sounds like they're really doubling down on just making a, a decent game. I mean, it's absolutely feels like more of a game. Like Andrew was saying before, yeah. it was like a tech demo. I mean, there's one level where they have to have built vehicle combat because you can ride around in a tank. Like there's tank combat. Yeah. Like they, they have put a lot of thought into the way that you'll approach every environment and to making each level feel different in that it seems like there's going to be make four or five different genres in this one game, which uh, I really like. I like that too, because I was going to ask you sort of like where this game sits in a post ukulele, pre Mario Odyssey platforming gear. It kind of sits. I feel like it's on its own in that, uh, you know, it's not a 3D platformer necessarily. It just has 3D platforming elements. I feel like it's almost like one contained package that's pulled from a bunch of different other things and put them all together. Like there's definitely platforming in every level, same as there's combat in every level. And the combat is more evolved than a game like Ukulele. And I imagine probably more evolved than it will be in Mario, but uh, the platforming is probably less. So, I mean, even some of the design with the platforming was really great. Like the level Andrew and I both played, um, a lot of the platforms move and the way that they approached it was supposed to be, this isn't just a block that's floating in a space. Every single piece that's here that you need to jump off of has a purpose in the world and is doing something. So if you're jumping over something that's moving, it's because it's part of a windmill or something mm. like that. It's like they actually physically exist. I like that. Yeah. That, that sounds like I the, was really impressed by it. It sounds like the climbing in Uncharted. It's like, you're not just, it's not just like stupid platforming. I know. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's a hover, hover platform you gotta do something yeah it just feels like they're thinking like the pedigree behind knack and now knack 2 is like this it's a, a lot of really incredibly talented people mm -hmm. and it's like it's studio japan and like i think it was easy to write off the first knack as like 
I have a cooling system and I want like a gorgeous racing game and I want like an FPS yeah. and I want like I'm an adult and I've spent five hundred dollars and I want to like prove it or it was, whatever. It was a very like, safe launch lineup. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I think there's something about platformers and about like kids games that people write off but like it is like i i don't know in the same way that i think ratchet and clank was one of the best games on ps4 last yeah. year like i think that this could be and like we don't know we haven't seen everything but like it, it feels like it could be a really good game i think it is i think it, it to me felt like a smarter lego game obviously mm -hmm. without the properties that really helped the lego game so it has a lot to prove i think um but i liked every single part of it that i played so that was good yeah. Wait. Uh, at any I'm point in. in the game can you turn into a coffee cup or a banana peel I don't think so, no. Okay, well, do you know of any games in which you can do that? Prey. Oh! <gasps> Let's talk about Prey. How about that segue, everybody? <laughs> Nailed it. Two for two today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, has anyone else here played Prey yet? No. Nope. Not yet. What do you expect from it? System Everything Max shock, just said. Bioshock y. Yeah, kind of Bioshock. Bioshock Dishonored, but with some like weird shapey shifty and survival horror type yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. Um, I feel like I gave myself too much of a high standard, and then it was made by the same studio that was made. That made Dishonored 2, which is my game of the year last year, by a lot. Well, sort of. It's like, it's the other, it's the other, it's the sister studio to that series. Yes. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of the same devs who worked yeah, up. Yeah, from, so. yeah, like it's Leon and Austin, basically. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm sure they like share tech and people yeah. and stuff. So it is, it isn't Dishonored in space. It's not the game that I, I thought it would be mm. Prey meets Dishonored in space. It's not that at all. Um, it is incredibly interesting. Uh, the way that it starts off, I don't even want to talk about what happens because the opening of that game is almost as interesting as the first Prey. I heard you wear socks in the shower. I didn't take a shower, actually. I heard you oh, that wasn't about shower. the game. He's just accusing you in general. Oh, me? <laughs> no, not you. That's, that's weird. Oh, no, I mean in the game. Who told you? Morgan you. Oh. You know. Uh, you. Morgan you. Um, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't take a shower. No. Oh. But... I did what get did drunk stink? multiple sort of? times. Okay. Yeah, I've heard it's like very it's very open and it's it's not open world exactly, but you can sort of just go exploring. It's, like it, from as much as I played, the progression feels like Bioshock. The same way as that. You learn locations, you can double back on them if you want to, but it's sort of like this is this area, the security area, the garden area. It felt that way. Um, and as you progress through each of those levels, which are actually really big, there's especially really vertical and very good looking, like looking out the window, you can see just space out there. Like it's beautiful. Uh, as you progress, you unlock, you know, more doors that get you through more areas. So it's like, you're just constantly opening up this kind of modular space station basically. And progressing is fun. The story I'm very interested in, I think more than even other people who are playing it. And the fact that these mimics exist, which, you know, are things that can take the form of anything and you have to learn what they will look like in a room. So I screamed every single time I saw one. There was not one time that a mimic showed up that I didn't go, ah, like every time. But yeah, I started spotting them. I started being yeah. like, that chair doesn't make sense. And we're like, really? why is that there? And that I love that it makes you, every time you walk into a new room, you're like, okay, what is out of place here? And it, it's like this That's sense cool. of tension that I so love. So it's like those old, yeah. like, those old like horrible browsers jump scare things where you're like, what's wrong with this picture? And you're like, I don't know. Kind of. And then it just shows you like but a it ghost doesn't, face. It doesn't do that, thankfully. Okay. Um, it doesn't just pop out at you. You usually have to like walk up to it or interact with it. There will be some doors you'll yeah, open and, and three mimics will, yeah. So that's sort of a testament to how well designed the environments are. Cause I feel like most video games I play, I'm like, that chair doesn't make sense. And then I keep walking. It doesn't turn into like a, well, see, a it's, moss it's man. It's funny because it's a mess there because some bad stuff has happened on the station. So it's a total mess, but no one showers, <laughs> no one showers apparently, but you'll still see something that looks wrong. Like everything is scattered, but you're like that chair specifically has fallen over, not near a table or something like that. How do like you do that. fellow chairs? It is me, a chair. And then you go hit the chair with a wrench and then it turns into a mimic and you have to fight it. And that's where the game kind of loses me is mm -hmm. that I do not find fighting any of the mimics fun. It is just, they move around really, really quickly and you just hack with a wrench until they sort of die. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of the time they're just up in your face and you can't even really see what's happening. So it's like, the atmosphere and the story and even the location all have me pulled in, but actually combat, I, I don't want anything to do with it. So it's is it a, is it kind of like Bioshock in that you can just bash people with a wrench, but you can also try like a whole different series of plasmids? Like, is there, is there like diversity in the combat that maybe like you didn't get to yet? Yes, or? almost definitely. So okay. I started with the wrench and then I did get, um, a pistol and there's a thing called a glue gun, which you can use to freeze enemies. Um, but there are also kind of abilities that you can unlock 
I don't remember how they do that, but you basically shove a needle in your own eye. They're what, um, neuromods? Uh, neuromods, yeah. that's it. So with those, you can get um, different abilities. Like you can turn into a mimic. Uh, I didn't get to any of those, though, because mm. I haven't played enough. But I assume that that will make things more fun, but it still doesn't excuse the first three hours of combat yeah. being yeah. sucky. I mean, there's all these cool, like, it's funny because watching just like clips people post on Twitter and stuff, it seems like you can do all these, like I saw this, um, it was like a recycle grenade or something that you could basically throw at something to make it just, disappear or whatever so like there was like somebody who posted a video that like they had like a an, a door blocked by like a crappy old chair or whatever and they threw this thing at it and it basically gets rid of that obstacle and then like i think that glue gun you can use to like build like stairs or like yeah, build like structural hard, support though. for yourself <laughs> like it's really not easy to build those stairs like <laughs> it seems so easy on like seeing someone else do it, but trying to do it yourself is like, I have no idea how this works. Like I, I try and just be like, I can't walk up this. I've run out of ammo. I don't know where to go. Yeah, it's probably like what it would be like in real life. Well, for that, I had to do a bunch of uh, reloads because I was like, I screwed up the goddamn stairs again. <laughs> so we have to reload again. But I think later in the game, um, the combat should get really interesting at the start. It sucked. I didn't want it. I tried to avoid it as much as I could, but I was okay with doing that and continuing to play because I was very interested in everything that was happening around me. Well, it sounds like they give they give you a proper toolbox, and that there's like you have you got weapons and stuff, but there's also weird power ups. And then uh, the glue gun sounds really interesting. I was watching some let's plays with that, and I love that it's it's one of those you know akin to sort of a gravity gun where it's like oh this is this is sort of a like a physics tool, but it's also a weapon and mm. you can also get creative with it. Um, you can put out fires with it yeah. and stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's cool. Uh, I was talking to Dan about it a bit. He's reviewing it. Uh, I think he uh, he's running into problems with it, but he's, I mean, we got, we got it like day one. So he's kind of chipping away at it, but he sounds, it sounds like he likes it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, again, I'm like, do I want to spend a bunch of time being stressed out by a video game? Like I like this, I like this space station, but like maybe I don't want like nasty little spiders jumping out at me. Yeah. yeah I mean, I love being stressed out by video games, so I'm all for it. That's like one of my favorite things is like yeah. playing something that I find really tense. Like I loved Resident Evil for that in the same way. Like PT is one of my favorite games, but uh, I think that a lot of people, like if I were to guess, will pick up this game, play it, and never finish it. Mm. Um, I'm interested to see like what the stats on that end up being. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know it's out there. So it is. We we should have our review. It was supposed to be today, but yeah, Dan lost his save. So that's something that is obviously a huge bug that needs to be considered in the review. Um, yeah, so we just heard about that. Works. There's like all these crashes, and there's yeah. there's yeah. a bunch of. I mean, it's like every game on day one these days. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think it delayed our review by at least today. So yeah. it's a we have a review in progress. Yeah. Missed that PS demo one. for it. Yeah, on I know, right? PS4, which I believe did they patch? Because I read that it was having some control issues on PS4. Oh, interesting. I don't know if they patched it. Like, I love that they did a demo. Like, yeah. I, I really that was one of my favorite things about the like 360 generation was that like so many games did have like, even if it was like a kind of bespoke little like separate part of the game. Um, it was just cool to like get a taste of it. This is even cooler. That's the first hour. I just I, wish that it saved your progress. Yeah, that's why cool. I didn't try the demo. It was like yeah. I just want like you're gonna have to do it again. Exactly, and yeah. it sucks. Like, let me carry that over. Otherwise, yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, so here's a piece of uh, interesting history that resurfaced. If you're familiar with the history of the PlayStation, uh, you'll know that it was rooted in what was once the Nintendo PlayStation, which was going to be basically a Sony manufactured CD-ROM drive for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, if you cut open a Super Nintendo, Sony made the sound chip. There was a weird business deal going on there. Uh, but famously, they had a falling out, and that's how we have PlayStation, and subsequently this podcast. Uh, there's this dude named Ben Hack who does wonderful sort of uh, modding and, and electronic stuff. I've, I've met the guy. He's super interesting. He made an Xbox controller that dispensed Hot Pockets one time. He's done way cooler mm -hmm. stuff than that. Uh, but he got a- Cooler than that? I think that's the apex right there. Yeah. Well, but before, before we even get to Ben Hack, let's back up. And this is like my we're favorite- going, We're going back to this. I was gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna Sorry. talk about this. Go ahead. Give me a second. <laughs> Okay. I got you. Your show. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put you in your crate if you're not if you're not careful. Oh, dang. Box you up. Uh, no. So there was a there was a prototype of this floating around that somebody got on an auction, and the whole thing is that there's never there never been games for this. Like it's ever it, it's it's an unfinished. Go far. I was about to say. Yeah, actually. No, I was about to no, say. Actually, I, I don't want to say. Actually, it's just it's my <laughs> this is my favorite story. This ended up being real because this dude found it in his attic. And he was like, oh, my dad used to work there and like just took this and like it's been sitting in our attic. And it's the only time that story has ever been real. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only my time that works someone at like, PlayStation. Exactly. Like, and I just, I love so much that like we got to this point where like everyone was skeptical. Everyone was like, oh, he probably 3D printed it. And like now, like over a year later, we're to this point where like this thing is not only functional, but like it could play games theoretically. Like there's, that's so cool. New games. Yeah. Uh, so Ben Hack screwed around with it. He's gone through it. And I think like a bunch of the circuit boards were rotted or whatever. And he's, 
very carefully soldered. And it's like, this is like, I mean, this is like getting the modern equivalent of like the Charles Babbage, Babbage difference engine running. It's like, a, it's a, it's an ancient computer that if you screw it up, you're kind of out of luck. Yeah. Uh, but he got it working and I guess it plays audio CDs now and there are people doing home. Finally. <laughs> yeah. So if you've ever wanted to listen to a CD on a Nintendo PlayStation, <laughs> call up Ben Heck. Uh, we wanted to talk about like, what would the video game landscape have been like if this thing had gone to market? Yeah, this is an incredibly sort of fascinating look at what could have been an alternate timeline here. Because famously, this fallout led into a kind of split timeline in the video game industry, mm -hmm. which gave us PlayStations and Nintendos and Game Boy Advances and Vitas and also a world where Xbox could be like, hey, we have a voice here too. Like, I don't know if Microsoft had would have gone head to head against a conglomerate Nintendo PlayStation. I don't know if we would have the Xbox One or the 360 or the upcoming Scorpio or Podcast Unlocked or anything along those lines. Um, or there could be a whole different group of, you know, right. people who left Sony over this and started a different company. Started a different company. So, and, and I think like it would have we would have seen what was probably the closest to a fully realized monopoly throughout mm -hmm. all the gaming timelines. Um, no, there's still uh, been monopoly on, on Super Nintendo and on, on every on game. Yes, coming to yeah. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ubisoft. Um, but we saw a monopoly from Nintendo uh, going all the way back to the NES where they were overcharging for carts um, and third parties had to go through them and pay them $40 a cart mm -hmm. for a $60 game, um, which they tried to do again with the PlayStation and then it didn't happen. So we, we saw discs and disc-based games versus cartridge-based games split off in a whole different tangent. We got the Final Fantasy games, which I don't think would have worked on N64 cards. So all these weird things that would have happened. But also, a lot of the things that Nintendo had to do because they were backed up against the wall, not selling a ton of N64s and not selling a ton of GameCubes was having to reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not entirely necessary when you were number one and crushing it. Well, so one of the key things that happened with Sony is that when they decided that they were making a console that was competing with Nintendo, uh, they were making what was deemed a toy at the time. Yeah. And they basically, in the, in the sort of the Sony infrastructure, uh, they were a consumer electronics company that made high-end stereo stuff for adults. And at that point, it was like a Nintendo was like a stupid little toy for, for kids. Why would yeah. you make that? Uh, but because Nintendo had basically like soured this deal with with Sony, the head of Sony took, you know, said to uh, Ken Kutaragi, like, okay, go make this thing. You have my blessing. Let's kick their ass. Uh, but he got he got put up, uh, teamed up with the, the Sony music department. Yeah. And it was because of their sort of their relationships with uh, with artists and with and with dealing with with music companies that they were able to sort of approach smaller software studios and be like, hey, so you want to put your games on a CD-ROM for a home console? Uh, and I don't think if if Nintendo had been like, yeah, we're a yeah, you can make this thing. I don't think there would have been much of a a, a drive to pursue optical media for games. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be we'd have CD-ROMs on 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 PC. And I think Microsoft would probably lean into making more gaming PC stuff, but Nintendo and Sony would still be doing these weird little like cartridge-based things. And I mean, maybe the CD would be kind of the PS Pro, PS Pro version. Yeah, like the Super Super Nintendo kind of. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm weirdly fascinated by that because like the undercurrent is that eventually Nintendo went on to do discs for GameCube, which were mini discs, uh, the Wii and the Wii U. Mm -hmm. But the Switch now is cartridge-based, and so has every handheld they've ever made. Whereas Sony immediately was like, our vision to tell these stories with these games is on discs like they partnered with rockstar and they started making grand theft auto games and kojima and they started making metal gear games and all of those things could would have happened on like what three or four cartridges or something like that like it would have been insane so it's also like looking at the decisions that sony's made that have been reactionary to nintendo's successes which were created out of sort of fear of losing their own traction in the industry stuff like the nintendo wii remote they created as part of this blue ocean strategy after the GameCube tanked. Not tanked, it just didn't really do, it didn't do play PlayStation right, numbers, right. right? So then they made a Wii Remote to do casual motion control games because we didn't have iPhone games yet. And Sony was like, we're gonna make PlayStation Move controllers to answer to that. PlayStation Move controllers is what I used to play PSVR games like a week ago. So all of that would have gone away. Uh, then you look at something like PlayStation All-Stars, which I don't know would have been like PlayStation characters versus Nintendo characters, but Nintendo Sony wouldn't have had PlayStation characters. Right, we so wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't whole, have. The whole thing is like super fascinating. Like honestly, like I, I am not even remotely versed in like tech or anything, but I watched the entire video of Ben Heck messing with this thing because yeah. it's like, it feels like 
it feels like someone found a piece of alien technology yeah. or like some like a a thing that shouldn't exist came through a wormhole and like watching him test it like you joke about audio CDs but like it's like genuinely exciting when he gets to play an audio CD because like when they booted this thing up it was an SNES and that's it it played SNES cartridges like you could play anything on it it worked fine but it's like, important to know right like this is a top loading cartridge based system that also has a disk drive in the front it's both and that's what's so cool is like when you boot it up there was like they they could get the cartridge part to work fine that's worked for quite a while now and like they could put any standard retail snes cartridge and it worked but like the crazy thing is or i guess super famicom but like the the disc test option was the only thing that worked from the the disc side and like they like piece by piece figured out every single chip and what its function was and how to reset it and like had to like do so much work to get to this point where like yeah it can play an audio cd and recognize that it's an audio cd but it can also read a burned disc of these two homebrew games people have made and it's like it's just so it's like it's archaeology it really is it's, it, really it's cool. like yeah. it is the most it's it's probably the rarest piece of consumer electronics in our industry yes. and it's like it well, is the, any i mean there's only one or yeah. it, i mean that's true yeah seriously and like, probably probably one of the most important as well yeah and know? that's why like the fact that like like man major props to the dude who found this thing and him and his son who let ben heck hold on to this thing for like three months to experiment with yeah because like I mean, i'm sure he had to sign like oh, i wouldn't have given terrifying that away. thing yeah no, i think there's a lot of other people that have been like 50 bucks and you can touch it yeah <laughs> you know um i think what's like what's kind of a disappointment but it's the, the harsh reality is that there aren't aren't any like exclusive games for this thing. There's no like Super Mario Crash Team Kart or anything like That's that. That's the thing. Like, I think everyone was, was hoping that like like it is so cool to find the hardware but and, and it's so cool to see like the the Super Nintendo controller with like a Sony print in the middle of it. Yeah. It's really bizarre. But I do think that uh the other thing like the the waiting for the other shooter drop thing was like oh like was there a disc with it like was yeah. there like this lost mario game that like no one ever knew about that features like all these crazy sony yeah. properties i mean but it's it's also like it's so interesting to me because it's like so many decisions that have been made independently by nintendo or sony you wonder how many of them would still happen like yep. nintendo sort of invented the wireless controller with the wave bird on gamecube and then sony took that in and put it in their own direction every every time. Uh, Nintendo kind of invented Rumble with the Rumble Pack on the N64, which wouldn't have happened if it not for this. So I wonder if like these decisions still would have made it into the Nintendo PlayStation, like or like like Max you implied, like we'd still be just like using like cartridge based systems with no rumble and like wired controllers. Like what, how they would have how they would have approached this as just a as a form of media? Like would you have would you buy a a Super Nintendo cart that came with a disc that like would you play uh you know FF7 that had sprite art for all the gameplay but then had CG cutscenes so possibly a disc possibly it would be because we did get eventually in Japan which was Sony's or Nintendo's sort of way of being like oops was the N64 DD uh -huh. which was the disc drive which was Japanese only so you could plug in a cartridge in the top and underneath hook up this entire other like flat looking N64 and put discs into that. So we sort of did get that Nintendo PlayStation disc cartridge hybrid from them. Uh, we also saw later on, they did the Panasonic GameCube, which was uh, a GameCube with like a larger optical media drive in it. It's so the, the DVD player, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then from there, they were like, you'll never be able to run a DVD through one of our systems ever again. <laughs> the Switch doesn't even have Netflix on it. Like, it's yeah. so weird. Well, without, the, without the PS2, would we have seen DVDs become as popular as quickly? No, I don't know if we would have seen the video game industry become as popular as quickly because Nintendo was sort of focused on making video games, whereas Sony leaned on their multimedia background and they said, we're going to Trojan horse every PlayStation with a DVD player and every PlayStation 3 with a Blu-ray Blu drive. You know, and now PS4, I would say, is hand-in-hand -hand in pushing 4K TV sales and, and stuff like that. And they had their little tangent with 3D, which didn't really work out. And just but streaming streaming media out of yeah. the box. It just, it pretty much runs everything. And I mean, the whole thing's just one giant butterfly effect. Like, yeah. Yeah. Obama wouldn't have been elected. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. I wouldn't live in the US. Like, it yeah. could have been like a million different things that like, maybe if that hadn't happened, mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have gotten into video games at a young age because that was true. around the time that I was a kid. I, if, like, I think that's what's so cool is like, everything you guys are talking about is like so valid and like so many people have written think pieces for years and years about this because like it's not like it was a secret that they almost partnered mm -hmm. but like having physical evidence of it is just such a cool it like really cool it just it it cements what could have been in a, in a really cool way yeah. and so like i i super i can't recommend enough that you just find the episode of the ben heck show and and watch it just to see this thing um because man 
how, how crazy is that? It's a piece of history. Yeah, and if you're at all interested, like read up on on some of the stuff that happened during this era, the reason this fell out. I forget if, if the book Game Over uh, by David Sheff covers any of this stuff, but it sort of talks about Nintendo's sort of rise and fall of being a monopolistic company um, and how monopolies look in the video game industry. We're actually like incredibly lucky right now to have so many different competitors fighting at the same time. The fact that we're getting, we got a new PlayStation last year, we got a new Nintendo this year and we're getting a new Xbox this fall is pretty awesome because a world when only one of those things is dominating is kind of that cocky version of Nintendo during the NES, Super NES eras, or the cocky version of PlayStation where they tried to sell PS3s for 600 bucks. Exactly, it never pays off. Like when, yeah. when PS2 was so successful, the PS3 era, I think Sony got a little cocky and I think we just saw the same thing with 360 into Xbox One. Yeah. Like I, I think that like being on top for too long, you kind of, it, it, not that it makes you lazy or anything, and like, but I, I, I do think you get into this mentality of like, oh, like, they'll just buy whatever we do. Right. And I think that doesn't really work. Yeah, the reality is kind of applies with if there's not enough companies, then the t company that's at the top doesn't need to try as hard. Exactly. Exactly. Totally. exactly. You don't have anyone yeah. to compete with. Okay. And ultimately yeah. the audience is, is fickle. And I, a lot, I think a lot of people don't remember that. And this is a dedicated PlayStation show and we have dedicated Nintendo and Xbox shows here at IGN, but the average consumer, just wants to play cool games for an affordable price. And what company makes that and what name is on that plastic box is ultimately meaningless to what their user experience can be when it comes down to taking out their wallet. Yeah. So yeah, any of this could have gone differently and it's super weird that we ended up with the timeline we have. I think my, my favorite piece of trivia about the development of the, play, the original PlayStation is they're like, how do we make 3D graphics in a consumer level box? How mm -hmm. do we do that? And the chipset they got is a weird mutated version of the thing that was in uh, broadcast TV studios that made those like action news logos. Mm. So when like the CBS logo flies at the screen, it's like brr, 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 action news 24 here at first here yeah. forever. And then you're like, that's that's what led to Spyro. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's this it's the same weird guts. And they just I mean, it was. It was an, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, and that's kind of the case. So, uh, I'm glad that these these two systems, these two companies, became separate things, and it's, you know, it's it seems to be going pretty well for them. Yeah, yeah. 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 they both seem to be doing fine. I mean, we said yeah, on a PlayStation happy. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so speaking of old franchises and whatnot. Uh, Brian, you want to talk a little bit about Resident Evil 4? Or Resident Evil? No, oh, no, glad. Do you want to talk yeah. about Resident Evil 4? I, I love Resident Evil 4. Ah, the Pandora's box. Oh man, it's open. easily the best Resident Evil game. Let me tell you why. No, I'm not going to do that. No, it really before. is. If you want to hear me talk about Resident Evil 4, go listen to any podcast ever recorded in IGN <laughs> history. I really love that Sorry, game. Sorry, do you want to talk about Resident Evil 4 a few moments? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do that. Uh, so Code Veronica X comes to PS4 this week. Um, the last time I bought this game was on disc on GameCube when Capcom was re-releasing those for like 20, 20 bucks a pop. Yeah, what is Code Veronica X versus just Code Veronica? Are they um, make that it? I'm not. I think it's a remake with some extra stuff. I'm okay. totally screwing this up. It's been a very long time since I played that game. Okay, okay. That was okay. uh, honestly like it's one of the better ones of, of that era, but it's one of the ones I've, I've replayed the least. Yep. But I did want to point out that this now joins a very long list of plays of PlayStation Four Resident Evil games that you can play right now. Um, and a few that are missing. So let's go through them real quick. Uh, Resident Evil Zero, which originally was released on the GameCube, it got remade and uh, it's on PS4 now. Resident Evil Remake, Deluxe Origins Bundle, which is Remake and Zero together. Code Veronica, Code Veronica X, Resident Evil 4, yay, 5, 6. Resident Evil Triple Pack, which is 4, 5, and 6. Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil Revelations, Resident Evil Revelations 2. I believe there's a double pack for Revelations 1 and 2, I forget. Umbrella Core, which we all try to forget, and missing is Resident Evil Two and Resident Evil Three Nemesis uh, and Operation Raccoon City. I'm not don't talk about that. One. <laughs> don't talk about that. Yeah, I, I kept out like the light gun games and yeah. like the weird yeah. arcade games and stuff like that. Well, These are, are more mainline ish. Is RE2 officially getting a remake? Do we know that? I think so so. Yeah. there was like there was a yeah. fan made one going on, but they yeah. are doing. I think they are doing an actual okay. one. So that's the one they've been kicking around for a while. Yeah. Um, I feel and the one like, remake is really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that like the thing is. The original Resident Evil is such an iconic and such an amazing game, and to remake that properly, like like did with the with remake on GameCube, they used pre-rendered backgrounds, they mm -hmm. changed the controls a little bit, but ultimately came kept the same sort of shell. Um, that was fine 10, 12 years ago, right? Remaking that again for PS4, we were like, okay, that's pretty cool. But Resident Evil Two. Um, you either have to remake that, remake that game from the ground up and make it like very Resident Evil 4, 5, 6, or you have to just like add better graphics and walk away. It's a very tough one to touch. I really like yeah. what a dork you are about Resident Evil. I really like those games. 
Like I even that, even like I, I even like the uh, like did you know that the did you know Resident Evil was uh, made for the Game Boy Color at one point? <laughs> no, and it's God. like horrible looking. <laughs> but great. like there's a there's a ROM released of it that you can go play. It's not pirated or, or anything like that because it's not you're not stealing money from a game that never came out. Um, and they figured out how to do like fake sort of like polygon backgrounds there, and it's not scary at all because all the zombies are like like three colors and like two bits and they're like, there's no voices. <laughs> it's just bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really like these games. I'm glad that they all get to exist here. Be cool yep. one day to just like have one button you can push on PS4 to download all of them. Yeah, but like it's going to be a thousand dollars because it's Capcom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they'll be like, let's recharge you for that again. And <laughs> That's again, true. And again. That's true. Yeah, so I don't know. And then we got Resident Evil 7 this year and hopefully Resident Evil 8 next. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the best place to start? Like if somebody's never played a Resident Evil in their entire life and you want to just is it four? Oof, man. Um, yeah, I honestly kind of want to say seven. Yeah. I, I feel like remake. Like, it's I remake. feel like if you jump into remake, like, because the thing with four is like, four is an incredible game, but I feel like as a starting point, it's not going to tell you what Resident Evil is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with Goldfarb. I think Resident Evil remake. The problem with remake is that I, I think that for younger audiences who didn't play games like that when they were kids. Yeah, it's like it could tanky. be really hard to play. Yeah. Well, younger That's audiences true. shouldn't be playing these games because they're very bloody and violent and there's a spider and there's a gorillas. That's a good in the point. Basement. Will you stop talking about this basement gorillas? <laughs> it's like every two weeks with you, you bring those guys I up. I mean, that's a fair point. I feel like like accessibility wise, if you jump into four, you can play that game if you yeah. play. No, modern. totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. All right. So anyway, moving on. Uh, I jumped in the podcast beyond Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash podcast beyond. You didn't say anything about groups. Groups.com. Groups.com. Uh, Angelfire.net slash groups. Uh, Danny Shaw says, PS4 Pro enhancements. Are they communicated clearly enough by pubs and devs? Should Sony no. step in and mandate more clear messaging? Yes. Uh, and he attached an image, which I will describe for you, dear listeners at home. It's a picture of the back of a, of a box. It says, oh, remote play supported, DualShock 4, or online play, those little logos they have. And it just says, PS4 Pro enhanced. What? Yep. Yeah, I, I think they've done a pretty bad job of explaining what that means. I yeah. think it's, it's, they've done an incredible job of encouraging devs to add PS4 Pro enhancements. And I think that, that part of it is going great. And I'm, I'm happy to see that. Like, I think right now it seems like a PS4 Pro is probably worth it because so many games add enhancements. Yeah. And even if they don't, you can do a lot of stuff with boost mode and all kinds of things. But like, I never understand what it means when it just says PS4 Pro enhanced. And like, very rarely do you get an actual even bullet point breakdown of like what that is. Mm. Hmm. At least in my experience, I mean, I like you. You are way more dialed in. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you there. I think it's they've they've had a massive communication error with with their products in the last year and a half. I would say going back to the Vita, like the whole like who is this for? Why should you buy it? What does it do? They have a very difficult time of explaining that to people. Um, PSVR is another one, right? Where yep. you're just sort of like, what is this? What does it do? What can I play with it? Well, I feel like this is like those two problems being folded into each other, which is like, I agree with that about Sony, but separately, like, I feel like I would imagine it's on the devs to say like, Hey, these are like, Hey, in our patch notes or Hey, on the back of our box, which is, is controlled by like the publisher, like, Hey, here's what we did. You well, know? and it's a thin line between sort of, um, over explaining that and under explaining that like on, yeah. on steam, when people look at patch notes for PC games, it's the most obtuse, insane stuff and people love it. Like they open it up and they're like, Oh, the bushes are three quarters of an inch shorter. So now you can hide behind them better. And you're like, what? And people read all that. And they're like, Oh, reload speed got enhanced by 0.2 seconds. Like I remember Max and I were really in a battlefront and they released patch notes for battlefront. And they're like, like, Oh, Chewbacca's feet aren't as big big now and so when he walks into a building like it's harder to shoot his and you're like what the f what are you talking about so <laughs> boss less dirty in the pants area <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's difficult to explain that stuff but i think that's better than not saying anything at all like what nintendo does with zelda is they're just like new optimizations are available and you're like dude i need to know more it doesn't even that. say that it says uh new optimizations to make the gameplay experience more pleasant yeah that's like <laughs> such nonsense. Every time. So that's <laughs> objective and i was gonna say i don't think that the ps4 pro enhancements thing is a PlayStation exclusive problem. I think that's that Microsoft is going to butt against this very, very big yeah. this fall when they release the Scorpio and they kind of say like, well, here's what this does on its own. Here's what this does if you just have an Xbox One. Like, where does the same game go? Because they're the trying to. The problem is they the don't. Audience. They don't want to undersell the original version. What yes. I'm interested to see specifically is how they do this at E3 this year, because yep. this is going to be basically the first time that we see mm. how that will actually look on an E3 stage. Is like this game is better with PS4 Pro. Like yeah. this is actually going to be the first showcase since the PS4 Pro is out in the wild. So I think you do a lot of that with just like a little lower third that just says like. 
running on, you know, playing Probably, on yeah. 4 Pro or yeah. something like that. But that's the crazy thing. Like, you should I, do more than that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like you're totally right that that's like a weird thing where you risk alienating the 40 million people who bought a PS4 before the Pro existed. Mm-hmm. And so if every single game is being shown you know, running on PS4 Pro, which I totally agree is what every single game that they show is going to say running on a PS4 Pro. Like, what is it going to look like for me on my regular PS4? And it's like, if it does look worse, like how do they show that? And then I'm guessing they just don't. And then yeah. what does it mean for like, when are we going to get the game? And maybe we won't, but like, will there be a game that runs so much worse on a regular PS4 or looks so much worse on a regular PS4 that it might as well not even exist for it? I think we need something like an old consumer reports sort of infographic or just graph of like a you know, checklist of what, I mean, I don't know if you could fit this on the back of a, a physical game box, but PS4 like pro optimizations and it would be 4K support, yes, no, yeah. or yeah. Uh, yeah. frame rate improvements, yes, no, loading time improvements. On Amazon, like, like I like bought a lot. I bought a Razer on Amazon and there were like four models of it and there was like the 421, the 421Z and you the 421ZD. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Which one did you Everyone relax. <laughs> Not a great one. one with the worst um, ratings. Yeah, but it, it's true. Like if you click on it, like it lets you, it shows you a chart and it's like, these are the four that we make. Did or like say even no like, blades. <laughs> all right. Even uh, a better example is I bought. a beard is the joke. <laughs> How could you uh, shave that? There's still hair there. I bought right, uh, a Brita filter and it was the same thing where it said like, like this one has like a, like an alert thing on the top and this one doesn't yeah. but like i feel like that's a really clear way of showing like with check marks like you what do that with mouses has. and keyboards a lot yeah totally like, like yeah. you said razor and my mind went to razor the gaming <laughs> hardware brand the company, because yeah. they actually do the exact same thing right. it was like that's what i meant <laughs> yeah i'm curious to see where this goes i think that the ps4 pro push is probably going to be a lot more visible after the scorpio gets more attention but even then yeah i think they might just sort of wait until Scorpio's out there in the wild to see if they fall on their own sword. Well, and also yeah. like when devs have had long enough with this thing to make a, like we haven't had the game yet. That's like, Hey, if you have a PS4 pro, you can play four player split screen. If you have a regular PS4, you can't play split right. screen at all. Like, mm-hmm. like that hasn't happened yet. And I think like that doesn't technically violate, you know, their rules about like, like the game still has to play on PS4, mm-hmm. but like when they're really notable PS4 pro features in more than just one or two games, I feel like that's when you'll run into this more where it, when it matters. Well, it's weird because it's like the best way to show this thing off is to see the two versions of the same game running side by side. Like we, we came in and we did a let's play of horizon and then I went home and played it on a pro and I was like, this is night and day, but they can't just straight up say that no because like we were saying before every time you see that every time you see a graphics comparison it doesn't actually make the pro look good it makes the other one look bad yeah every time you're like oh that's terrible and it's like you can't get past that you can't be like both good slightly better it's like bad it's tough right because like look at like i mean and i think apple has the same problem right like they're not like here's our new iphone 7 plus here's the photos it takes here's what your crappy iphone 5 takes like i wish they could do that because the photos that my phone takes are awesome but I don't need to see what someone else can't have in order to feel better about what I do own. Yeah. Like, it's we're, at weird. A, we're at a very funny point with games where they're no longer readily possible to show off online yep. or in like we had that the PSX live stream where they were like, here's what uh you know, here's what Days Gone looks like with the HDR enhancements. Kind of. Because yeah. you're and watching that was, this on a 480p or your exactly. phone. Yeah. That was the PS4 Pro reveal event was exactly. even that. They were yeah. like, look how great it looks. And it's, it's like, like it's in 4K your... and we want streaming in 4K. <laughs> exactly. It's like when we talk about you having a beard for people listening at home. They don't know if you have a beard because they can't hear the beard. And it's and you rub it against the mic? Yeah. So imagine you if that's what a beard sounds like. It's, it's funny because we have that not just with, with 4K and HDR, but also with PSVR, where you'll demo something in VR that probably looks incredible when you're wearing a high-tech yeah. helmet, but... On in video form, it, it just looks like a weird aspect ratio with an incredibly floppy camera m- movement. It yeah. reminds me of uh, like in Ant Man when they're having this like big epic fight on the train, and then for a second it like cuts back to like a like a wide view, and it's just this sad little toy train, and yep, you're just yep, like, yep. there's no music or anything. Like it, I feel like it is that. It's that moment of like when you're in it and immersed and have it right in front of you, it looks great. But like to someone watching or spectating or not seeing yeah. in optimal conditions, it's, it's not going to look that good. It's the same thing Nintendo has with the HD rumble, which when yeah. they're showing off one, two switch, they're like, there's a man with a cow. This isn't this is crazy. You could count the balls in that these box. Ice cubes? Like, yeah, what, I don't care. <laughs> and the first time I held one of those things, it's like, Oh, whoa, that actually works. And then it was the same with, uh, uh, when 3DS first came out, I remember having conversations with people who'd seen it at events. I mean like, so tell me, does that actually work? Is that for real? Mm-hmm. Cause they're not selling me on it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, the challenge of, of 
selling video games based on I think marketing games is getting harder and harder. Like yeah. a trailer for a VR game almost always looks bad. Yeah. Like it's it's just I'm glad that we don't have that. I'm glad we yeah. don't have to worry about making the games look good. Yep. Yeah. We're such big babies, we're just like, give us the toys and we'll buy them. Like we <laughs> have to solve those problems. You know, it's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Brittany Hintz, Hintz, Hintz says, I need to know if I should go canoeing or tubing in June. I was going to say tubing because it's way more relaxing. Mm. It's also more fun. You kind of spin around. I would say canoeing, um, really? but only if it's a two-person canoe because yeah. that way you can splash the person in front of you and it's very fun. <laughs> mm. Okay. I still think tubing's better. Depends where you're going. All right. Uh, Christopher Dart says, what are the most beloved games of the current generation that you just can't in get into? I want to extend this to the last gen too. I can't get into Dishonored. Oh man, I know. I don't like Dishonored one either. Okay, oh, Dishonored two is one of the best things I've ever played. You uh, see, so wait, you you love you love Dishonored two, but you didn't you didn't dig. I didn't like one? Dishonored one. Correct. Really? Yeah. Yep. Mm. Huh. And I think a lot of people have been tweeting at me, being like, "I tried to play Dishonored because you said so much nice stuff about Dishonored two, but I didn't like it." And like, play the second one. Don't worry about really? it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Straight well, up. Well, that's good yeah. to know. Uh, some of the biggest games that I've never really gotten into are Pokemon and Overwatch. Like, I completely understand why people are hooked on them. Mm. I don't know how, I think I missed Pokemon by like a year or two because I love anything sort of top down RPG that Nintendo does. I love all their like collectible based games. Um, just could never really get into it. Pokemon Go, I just kind of watched that happen and was like, cool. I'm glad everyone loves it, but like, I'm not touching this. Overwatch, like, I bought it. I played a few rounds and I was like, I get it. I get why people love it. Not for me. So I had a really cool conversation with my roommate, Callie Plaguey, who used to work here. Now she's over at GameSpot. Uh, and she pointed out that there's this there's this thing that happens now where people appreciate sort of an overall aesthetic of something and they don't necessarily are, they're not necessarily hardcore into the actual thing itself. Yeah. And I think Overwatch is a perfect example for that because there's, there's like a story through like cutscenes online and a webcomic. Like there's there's lore there, there's plenty of it, but it's all scattered. And then people sort of like playing the game and it's fun, but they mostly just like the characters. Like you'll make yeah. fun of someone for being a Hanzo main. And like, I actually like the, the aesthetic of the game from a distance. I'm like, this yeah. looks cool. I kind of want to get into it. Overwatch is also, gameplay wise, a very no, good No, I'm not, game. yeah, no, yeah. totally. I'm like, completely. Incredibly yeah. good, but you're right. And then I'm sure there are people who've latched onto Overwatch uh, for the way that it looks, even like cosplayers who may not necessarily play yeah. the game that much, who, who are attached to that universe. And I think like that too is to put it Blizzard's credit. Like I think the community even, around that game is incredible. There are people who might not even be playing the game anymore, who like maybe were super into it and got away from it, but they're still cosplaying, or yeah, but true. they're still like making fan art. And like I think that community is so incredible. I'm that, kind of like, one of those. Like I really like I'm gonna be cosplaying as a Overwatch character whenever I find a convention to wear this costume too that I've already mm. made, and mm. I haven't played the game this year. But I still like have an attachment to that. Is, that, is it that it. funny gorilla? It's not the funny gorilla. I like the funny gorilla. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. He's Will, William, the smart gorilla. Have they added any Winston. farm animals to that game yet? Does Winston count? No. no you don't have gorillas. How crazy farm. farms you go to uh, have a couple gorillas? A gorilla could be a farm animal if you're rich. If you hate know. all the other farm animals, you want them to get in fights. Bastion's kind of a farm animal, that big robo. Fair enough. The tractor. I like yeah. the tractor. He's yeah. great. With that bird on top He's of him. He's got a bird? Yeah. It's yeah. really nice. All right. All right. Anyway. <laughs> I don't why I don't play um, this game. But to <laughs> answer that question, I don't know. I'm finding this I'm finding this one kind of tough. Like The one that always stands out to me is not a PlayStation game. It's Alan Wake. A lot of people love that game. I just couldn't get into it. Hmm. Um, game's boring. I'm sorry. It's great, but it's boring. Alan, wake me up when it's over. Am I right? Yeah. Alan, go to sleep. Is what they should call it. Someone that. here needs to say just they joking, like Alan Wake. I like Alan Wake. I, I do like Alan Wake. will be really mad at us. I got all the achievements in Alan Wake, and I played all the weird I got all DLC. the achievements, too. It's the weird thing. Yeah, I still I, got them all. I remember, I think the thing that bothered me the most about Alan Wake was just the really egregious project placement. Like, all the Energizer oh, stuff yeah. was probably my yeah, like, biggest funny. complaint about. But I like it. I think it's actually smart. It has a like a very lot of energizer stuff for a game about going to sleep. <laughs> it's not All right. Uh, All right. Oh, what'd you have? Would no, you no, say no, it? Nothing. No, no, get it out. I don't want to Come on. I was going to say, but, uh, even though I like them, I haven't gotten into the Souls games, but it's mostly a time thing. Oh, yeah. See, it's for me, I'm, I'm not good yeah. enough. I, I got really, I did like really well in Bloodborne. I got good. like a get, decent. I haven't gotten good. I got up to um the, the what's the lady, the first lady boss in Bloodborne? Samantha. Samantha, yeah, I don't know. I beat I beat a couple of bosses in Bloodborne. And I, I was like, I'm gonna play Dark Souls three from the beginning and get into it, and I just didn't when it came out. And now I'm in the same boat I was with Bloodborne, where it's like part of the fun of those is like playing them and talking to everyone about them as yeah. it's happening. And I just, so like I don't know. I do want to get into yeah, Souls. I really, really badly, think with but. those two though, if you would have played them and tweet about them, everyone would still be like, Oh no, I remember that part. Like I still think that you would have the community reaction. Yeah, probably true. They would also tell you that you're bad. 
and that you suck. Well, at I am bad, and I do suck. You do that every right. time. Uh, <laughs> I get that anyway. I get last, that all games I'm good same. at. <laughs> One last question. Uh, Zachary Rolf asks, what does the next Tomb Raider game look like in your minds? Uh, this has, of course, been sort of leaked by some dude's laptop on a subway in Montreal or something. It's yeah. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And we don't really know anything about it. Uh, to me, it's more Horizon, less Uncharted. I think they get... The, they get further and further. They need to get further and further yeah. away from the sort of like scripted, cinematic, long hallways with action sequences. I want them to pull the lens back again because yeah. I think um, this works really well for the Batman series. Maybe less so with Knight, but I mean from Arkham Asylum to Arkham Knight, or I mean to Arkham City, uh, it was much more open and bigger, and it wasn't like open, open world. Side quests, it, like felt like it. exactly, and like Tomb Raider kind of already did that. Like like in Rise, you you feel more like you're playing an open world game, and and everything feels bigger. I would love for them to just not have it be like let it just truly be open yes. world. I think yeah. would would be really cool. Yeah, I think I think Horizon completely changed the format for these games now. I think that like even even Naughty Dog being like look at what Horizon did. Like that's the new benchmark. Well, I mean, I Horizon and Zelda, they've got yeah. a, a tall order ahead of them. Yeah. And I think that it's also uh, Rise was such a huge improvement on the first one, which was great in it on its own, but that's mm -hmm. the problem that third installments really face is that they have to top not one but two. Uh, and the second one is frequently taking your expectations and doubling them. And the third one, if it doesn't live up to it, you're like, well, that was a huge letdown. That's and, why, uh, that's why uh, Shrek three was such a disappointment. For right. Yeah. It was really just, it's a like bummer. now that I have like a finite amount of time that I can put towards games. Like I work a lot, I travel a lot. So I don't, I just really have to pick what I'm going mm -hmm. to play. I've played one and two and I really like both of those games for me to play a third one. It has to be different enough yes. for me to be like, I haven't already experienced this twice. Why would I choose this third one over a totally different experience? Completely agree. And like, I don't know what that is. I'm kind of actually, I just, I disagree. I don't think, I don't think I want it to go more open world because it was, I think they sort of did that with the last one and they had this cool setting and they had that, those little tunnels that led from one thing to the next. I kind of want it to be open worlds and I want it to have different, like, not just not just things connected by tunnels or like a couple different areas you're in, but really a Shotted handful traveling. of traveling. Yeah, give me that Indiana Jones factor, cool. except like with the dotted it's... line and the plane and stuff like that. Yeah. Over the map. I like that. I want to see yeah. Laura in like a like go to let's go to London. Like let's go to a city. Let's have some. some I would weird totally kind of be cool with that. Areas. Let's yeah. have some. Are you asking her out? Yeah, let's go to the city, Laura Croft. <laughs> Uh, playing. Side note, I never finished Horizon, so I started playing that again just now. Like, mm -hmm. I've just moved, so I've just, like, set everything up, got my TV set up, and my dad's visiting at the moment, and I was like, he just, he's not familiar with a lot of games. It's like, I think that I'll be able to play this in front of my dad, and he'll be fine with it, and he's totally into it. He's oh, like, cool. That's he's, awesome. like, asking me all of these questions about the lore, like, keeps commenting on how beautiful it is. Like, he cares so much about, what's the, the fake dad's name? Oh, like, her Samantha. not dad? <laughs> it's definitely not Samantha. What's his name? It's, like... Carrie? No. Hey, Max. It's not. Jared, you guys already should forgot. know this. I'm yeah. so bad at names. The dad man who's an outcast. What's his name? Uh, Sawtooth. Never mind. Old Sawtooth. Yeah, I don't even know your name sometimes. Listeners know who I'm talking about. And my dad is like, where did he go? How could he abandon her? He was like, <laughs> we'll find him, dad, hopefully. Yeah, no, a, that's an incredibly, like, just rewarding game to look at, to yeah, watch beautiful. other people play. Yeah. is really cool. And somebody who, like, who who knows how to play, which I assume you do, like, you're good at it, to watch somebody play, like, that on that level is really awesome, but I too. think the only thing that is not fun to play about that game is the amount of time that you spend walking yeah. between things. So there is, like, and I wouldn't have even noticed, or I didn't notice this before my dad was watching, is that he's like, man, she's really fit. You're like, I guess she is running yeah. a lot. <laughs> like yeah. I really am running between things quite a bit, but yeah. you got to uh, get that infinite fast travel that they sell at a store in that game. I don't know do. why. So they don't, so there's like, there's no carbs in that universe. You know, you'd have to like cut up a bunch of like toaster dinosaurs to make like a loaf. Maybe of those, you just that's inject just those having, plants right in your arm. And yeah, you just, but that's still, it's energy. fiber. <laughs> anyway, uh, this has been beyond yet another episode. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Be sure to check out our wonderful group of friends. That's facebook.com slash group slash podcast beyond. And of course, be sure to subscribe on whatever it is you're watching or listening on, uh, whether it's, you know, iTunes or Apple play or go to, uh, you know, the, the, the IGN, uh, PS4, Roku, Xbox one, YouTube, YouTube, is, com slash IG and beyond. The, yeah, that's that one. I was getting to that one in a second. Thanks for coming in there and saving, saving my ass. Sorry. Uh, but no, seriously, subscribe IGN. Uh, YouTube.com slash IG and beyond. And just we're on it. We're on all the things and yeah. it's exhausting. It's like horcruxes are so we're getting apart. crazy close to uh, beyond 500 and uh, working on planning some things. Yes. Yeah, we'll let you know yes. as soon as we have our plans uh, stuff solidified. My, yeah, probably a Two, a two pronged might celebration be at this point. We're so. trying to make a thing that works for a lot of people so that they can enjoy some thing. Yes. And that's how, the, that's, that's how it's done. In the vaguest terms, that means it won't 
the celebrations won't all be in San Francisco. You said, I, yes. Anyway. Vegas terms? Vegas terms. Vegas. Vegas, baby. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. Beyond 500 in Vegas. No. No, just no. kidding. No. 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 Maybe. No. 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 Good night. But maybe. Oh, no. no. no.